Hi, everybody. I am Ms. Karen from Adams Memorial Library. Thank you for joining me for this week's book report. Now, the stories I have this week are all about magic. The kind where you have a magic hat and you can pull a rabbit out of it. So it's about different magicians. Some are good magicians. Um, not quite so good. But the stories I have for you this week are Milo's Hat Trick, written and illustrated illustrated by John Agee. Anton can do magic, written and illustrated by Ola Kernica. Magic Spell. This one is written and illustrated by Julie Pashkis. And this one is about one of those magicians who are maybe, maybe not quite so skilled. This one is called Maxwell's Magic Mix-Up. Here's Maxwell. And is written by Il Linda Ashman. And the illustrations are by Reagan Dunnick. And finally, Miss Miss Incredible Storybook. And oh, the storybook is incredible. I wish I could see one like that. Miss Miss Incredible Storybook was written and illustrated by Michael Garland. So let me tell you a little bit more about these books. And... If you're interested in reading them for yourself, you can come to the Children's Room at the library at Adams Memorial Library and check them out, or you can reserve them and pick them up that way. But in Milo's hat trick, Milo actually is one of those magicians who maybe needs a little bit of help. He's called Milo the Magnificent, but he's not really a magnificent magician. There's a little trouble with the card tricks and... When he tries to pull a rabbit out of his hat, all he's got is a mouse, and um, people aren't really that impressed. Uh, they might actually be throwing tomatoes, and that's never really a good sign when the audience starts doing that. So the theater manager says, Milo, I'll give you one more chance. Tomorrow you've got to pull a rabbit out of a hat or else you're fired. So Milo decides he needs to catch a rabbit. And what better way to catch a rabbit than with a carrot? So he'll just uh, hold up the carrot and then a rabbit will come and he will capture the rabbit in the hat. Um, but instead he captures a bear. Apparently bears like carrots too. Bear says, what are you doing out here? Milo says, well, I'm trying to catch a rabbit for a hat trick. And the bear says, oh, a hat trick. I know a hat trick. And he dives right into the hat. There. Somehow that huge bear fit in this little hat. And, ah, oh, Milo is thrilled. Milo is so excited. He said, would you come with me to perform the trick? And the bear says, sure. And Milo says, well, you'll have to hide in the hat until it's time. And the bear says, no problem. Just give me a whistle. And I'll pop right out. Milo is so excited. He's finally going to get to do this trick. So he's taking the subway back home, uh, the train. And But when he gets back to the theater, something's wrong. It's not his hat. Uh oh. Hat's got mixed up. And uh oh, here's somebody else who also doesn't realize it, but he does not have the right hat. And what do you think happens when this gentleman's at a crowded restaurant and whistles for a waiter? Ta-da! The bear pops out and, well, people at the restaurant didn't really like that. So what's going to happen? What happens to Milo? What's going to happen to the bear who's loose in the city? Check this book out and find out if any magic ever occurs. Now, this story, Milo loves, loves magic. He loves magicians, and he has a hat just like this magician does. So he thinks he is going to be set. He wants to do some magic. He wants to make something disappear, so he decides he's going to make this tree disappear. So he stares at the tree, and then he does some magic. Had a little trouble with his hat. It's a little bit big, so sometimes it slides over his his eyes but he does his magic he waves his hands and the tree is still there hmm. so he thinks maybe the tree is too big maybe he should work his way up to something big oh how about a bird bird smaller 
Maybe you can try to make the bird disappear. So he does some magic and when he moves his hat, the bird is gone. Yes, he must be able to do magic. <laughs> but then here comes Luke. Anton says, I can do magic. And Luke says, no, you can't. He says, yes, I can. I'll make you disappear. So he does some magic and well, there goes Luke. But oh, when he takes a hat away from his eyes, Luke is gone. Wow. Oh, he's so excited. Anton made Luke disappear. Yes. But then he thinks, oh, wait. Oh, dear. Luke shouldn't disappear. That's not good. Uh-oh. Is he going to be able to bring Luke back? Yeah. You better do some more magic. And, uh-oh. That's not Luke. Or is it? Oh, no. Did he turn Luke into a bird? No. Is he ever going to be able to do any magic? And what happened to Luke? Oh, you can check this book out from the library and find out. Anton can do magic. Now in this one, the great Aziz and his lovely assistant do magic. He has a magic wand. He does a lot of spelling magic. When he does a magic spell, it changes the spelling of a thing and it changes into something new. For example, he had a dish and he pointed his magic wand at it and turned it into a fish. It went from being a dish D-I-S-H to a fish, F-I-S-H. And, oh, he says, thank you, thank you. And he bows and he listens to the applause, except it's the assistant who actually has to catch the fish and put it into water. But then he does another trick. He takes a beautiful rose and turns it into a beautiful hose spraying water. But, oh, my goodness, the assistant has to wrestle that hose and keep it from watering the audience. So she's got to do a lot of work while Aziz is just getting a lot of applause. Uh-oh, but then he conjures up a wire and then changes it into fire. He changes it from wire to fire. But oh my goodness, oh no! Who's gonna put out the flames? The assistant. Luckily, there was that hose, remember? So she had to put out the fire, and Aziz not even noticing that she's doing all this and saving everybody from his magic tricks. He just takes a bow. But then Aziz goes a little bit too far. He points his wand at the lovely assistant and changes her lovely wig into a lovely pig. Mm, no, she is not happy about that. So she gets the wand and then she changes his hat into a bat. And that's when things start to get really messy. So what are they going to do? Are they going to be able to work together? Are they going to be able to change things back? Change things into something better? Check this book out and you can find out. Now, here's Maxwell. Maybe Maxwell needed a lovely assistant to sort of keep him in line, but... He was sort of a last minute addition to the birthday party because, oh, can you pull a rabbit out of the house? Maybe the rabbit can pull Maxwell out of the, out of the hat. But it's this fellow telling the story and he says, it's my sister's seventh birthday. And the entertainer called in sick. Poor Louise is broken hearted. Better find a backup quick. Call the ghost, the clown, the dragon, call the circus and the zoo. Only Maxwell the magician isn't booked today at two. So he's the only one that can is free. So he comes in and party starts. Magician enters. Hocus pocus. What a shock. Uh-oh. Stumbles through his incantation. Maybe made a little mistake. <gasps> and turns Louise into a rock. Oh, it's always bad when the birthday girl turns into a rock. And, of course, her parents are very upset. Some of the partygoers think that's pretty cool. He says, uh, hey, what else can you do? Turn, he's going to turn Joey into something? Yes, turn Joey into a bird. Well, I'm not sure Joey really wanted to be a bird either. And then 
You know, he's not used to being a bird, so he accidentally gets his claws in Katie's hair. Katie says, get him off me. And Katie is turned into a cat. Yeah, some things just get bigger and worse from there. Oh, my goodness. He's turned somebody into a pig who's heading for the birthday cake. And to distract from the cake, he, Maxwell, conjured up a whole band. And, um, yes. Well, their parents are very not happy about that. Uh, but he accidentally turns the dad into a broom. So he thinks, uh, maybe I need to call for help. So he calls his nephew, Alex. Alex knows how to undo the magic, which is good. So he figures, oh, he can change people back from being a bird or a broom or a cat. But then he finds out that Louise is a rock. And oh no, changing rock magic is the hardest thing there is. Is Alex going to be able to do it? Is Louise going to be a rock forever? <gasps> we check out the book, find out. Now this is the last one. This would be the coolest book ever, I think. So Miss Smith is new to the school and she's the new teacher this September. On the first day of school, here's Zach, one of, one of the kids in the class and he thinks, oh, things are always the same year after year, but Miss Smith and her incredible storybook are a little different because when Miss Smith starts reading from this book, the characters pop out of the book and come to life. So when she's reading a pirate story, everybody can see the pirates. And when she reads some more, it's like they're on the ship. They can feel the ship moving on the waves. They can feel the wind in their faces. They can see the pirates. And if she reads a story about Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf, they can feel the breath of the wolf. Oh, the best stories. But when she's done with the stories, when she closes the book, all the characters disappear again. They go back into the book and disappear, which is great when Miss Smith is reading them, except one day she's stuck in really bad traffic, and she's late for work. So the principal says, "Ah, oh, Miss Smith is going to be a little late. I'll just read you a story until she gets here. But when he starts reading a story about a princess and a knight and a dragon, they all come out, including the dragon that breathes fire. And the principal says, ah, I'm going to run for help. But then, you know, there's no teacher there. So the kids start reading. And Zach keeps saying, no, 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 you have to finish a story. But they don't. They keep starting. Somebody else will start another story. And somebody else will start another story. The three bears appear. The Cheshire Cat and the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland appear. Oh, my goodness. All oh, these, all the storybook characters appear. It's getting wild in school. Who can stop it? Can Miss Smith get there in time? What's going to happen to the classroom? Oh, check Miss Smith's incredible storybook out from the library and you can find out. So I hope you will enjoy these stories about magic. I think they were pretty fun. So as I said, come on down to the library and check them out. And thank you for joining me today. And please Join me again next week and we'll talk about some more stories. So thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.